I think this is a question of balance. And these are tunnels, the old uh, Navy signal station, the entrance of which is near Eastern Beach and Devil Star Road. And they have been disused for a very long time. Before that, they were used by the military, by the MOD, so again, they had no particular use. I remember going to visit them in 2012, and we decided to start talking about them, to, to mention it to different people who were interested in projects around Gibraltar. And one project that emerged was this question of wine storage. As a result of that, the Commission approved this morning the construction of the largest wine storage facility in the world. I mean, that will take place in Gibraltar, in disused tunnels, in circumstances which are ideal. Obviously, there are heritage issues which, have, which arose. The Heritage Trust was very complementary of the way in which the proposed project managers have uh, consulted with them and taken on board many of their suggestions. But there were, there were two sticking points. One was whether a number of blast walls should be destroyed or not, and the other one was whether a ramp should be destroyed or not. And on balance, the Commission took the view after discussion and uh, deliberation that um, the blast walls could be removed because there are other blast walls within the site that are being retained and indeed there are innumerable blast, blast walls all over Gibraltar so there, there, that wasn't uh, an issue and also in terms of the ramp it was felt that it was more important to allow for disabled access and for the access of elderly people who might go to visit the facility as part of the tours that they intend to, to, to conduct it was more important to allow for that access to allow for that uh, to take place instead of keeping the ramp and instead you could mark the site where the ramp was located. I mean, you've said it's the largest or it will become the largest wine storage facility in the world. How significant is this um, uh, by way of inward investment to Gibraltar? Well, it's an important new area of economic activity. Bear in mind the facility is going to employ new people. They, they explained today that uh, they've been in touch already with the various cruise companies who are interested in bringing out uh, tourists to see the, the wine tasting facility and to actually participate in tasting wine. At the, at, at the same time. So I think it, it, it's, it's an important new area of activity in Gibraltar, something which has not existed before. And also it has this, this important uh, tourist dimension as well. So really I think it's, it's a significant development, yes. And you've spoken about it being a balancing act for anyone who doesn't, uh, wasn't here today, who doesn't have all the information um, and is concerned about uh, any loss to heritage. Um, tell us how well you think the applicant, the developer, has engaged with the heritage significance of the site? Well, I think that the, the, they submitted the heritage paper and it's clear from the two outline applications that we've had, which were also discussed in the Commission and from the full planning application that was discussed today, that, that they, they have given a considerable degree of, of time to heritage considerations. Indeed, as I said, even the Heritage Trust is very complementary at the discussions that have taken place and at the way in which the developer has engaged with them. But look, heritage is like that. It's, not, it's uh, subjective in, in, in many ways. There are people who are more purists and who think that every single item has to be, has to be conserved wherever that item may be. And there are others who feel that uh, you, you, you need to combine progress with heritage at the same time. And while you need to preserve what is important that should be preserved, it's not that every single item has to be preserved. So that is a debate which the Commission has had over the years and which indeed continue today over this application. And the balance, on balance, the Commission took the view that yes, you, know, you could remove some of the blast walls because there are other blast walls that are being retained. And, and indeed, as, as somebody commented, there are, there, are, there are something like 60 kilometers of tunnels inside Gibraltar. This is only a very small section of a huge network. Sure. And, and very finally, uh, you made the point yourself that um, although it has uh, a very significant um, tourism appeal, it's not a, a tourist site uh, that the, the government will administer. It, it's a, a business which will have significant tourism offerings. Huh? That's right. This is a private uh, entity. They, they will operate and, and run the facility. Originally, it was to be wine storage only that then developed into wine tasting and into Ex exploiting a tourist dimension which I think is very real and which exists and, and you'll see the the whole design has been very very sensitively designed taking into account the the surroundings the, the the green roof and also the way in which the tunnels themselves and the wine storage and the wine tasting is going to take place inside the tunnels again I think it opens up heritage to the public by allowing members of the public whether they're tourists or whether they're residents to visit an area that was previously shut out to them that can only be good for heritage as a whole and, and the project as a whole, your, the government is very supportive? Huh? The government is absolutely delighted with the project. I think it represents a brilliant use of a facility that, that was neglected and abandoned for very many years. And we'd like to see, I mean, there are tunnels, as I said, all over Gibraltar. And we will slowly be, be making people aware that these are available. And we'd like to see projects of, of a similar nature developed elsewhere.